anybody who's not building a team, right? And rebuilding it using your model? They're dinosaurs. Welcome to EOS Weekly. The 2011 movie Moneyball tells the true story of Billy Bean, the general manager of the Oakland A's. It's a great movie, and you don't have to be into baseball to like this movie, because the movie isn't really about baseball. It's about innovation and disrupting the status quo. Billy Bean applied a new model to the game of baseball that changed the game forever. Where any team that hasn't adapted and embraced the new model put forth by Billy has since then fallen by the wayside. Every once in a while the EOS universe is going to go through similar disruptions, and this is one of those times. On January 24th, a new project was announced called Liquid Apps. The purpose of Liquid Apps is to address the scalability issues that the EOS mainnet has been experiencing lately. CPU and RAM are limited scarce resources on any given EOS IO chain, and as we discussed in a recent episode, the cost of running an application on top of our most popular EOS IO chain, the EOS mainnet, has become prohibitively high for many development teams. So some of those DAP teams have begun looking elsewhere, looking at other options outside of the EOS mainnet. Block producers, together with the open source community, have been responding to the CPU and RAM shortages on the EOS mainnet by spinning up alternative EOS IO chains. And over the past few months in particular, this has led to a splintering effect, where new EOS IO chains have been popping up at an accelerating pace. The Liquid Apps team appears to have foreseen the scalability issues we are encountering well ahead of time. And they have answered with an exciting innovation here. An innovation that will likely be as disruptive to the EOS ecosystem as Billy Bean's new model was to the game of baseball. We should mention here that the team behind Liquid Apps comes from Bancor, which has a proven track record for delivering impressive, bleeding edge technology in the blockchain space. If this Liquid Apps announcement had come from an unknown organization, it might have been looked upon a bit more skeptically, potentially sounding too good to be true for many of us. But we do know the background of this team, and that's why we feel comfortable saying that Liquid Apps will change the game when it comes to making it affordable to run an app on top of the EOS mainnet. How much more affordable, we don't know just yet, but it looks like it could be significant. So that splintering effect that we've been seeing lately may all of a sudden come to an abrupt end here. Because if more dApps can afford to build on top of the EOS mainnet, it lessens the demand for alternative EOS IO chains. The other reason why it looks like Liquid Apps is going to stop the splintering effect is because it's going to offer our block producers a new revenue stream outside of the normal on-chain block rewards. Currently, if you're a standby BP making little or no revenue on the EOS mainnet, why not spin up your own chain? What do you have to lose? But what's happening now is Liquid Apps is going to offer a new revenue stream to all of these BPs through a role that never existed before. And that role they're creating is called a DAP service provider, a DSP, which is an essential token incentivized role within the Liquid Dapp solution. We'll explain DSPs further throughout this episode, but the point we wanted to make clear right off the bat here is that this combination of, uh, of first of all, making the EOS mainnet more affordable for all Dapp builders, while at the same time providing an alternative revenue source for BPs, this is a killer combination that is going to cause the focus to return to the EOS mainnet so it's important that we all, we the EOS community, that we understand what Liquid Apps is due to the massive impact that this is about to have. Because it looks like this is in fact going to cause a significant shift for all EOS stakeholders, regardless of whether you're an investor, a dApp builder, or a block producer. This is going to impact everybody. So what is Liquid Apps and how does it work? For starters, 
Liquid Apps is not a new EOSIO blockchain. It is not a sister chain, nor is it a side chain. And Liquid Apps does not require any changes to the EOSIO software, the software that's running our blockchains. So no change needed to our base protocol code here. What Liquid Apps is, is a layer that rides on top of the EOS mainnet. And dApps will have the option of plugging into this layer here instead of plugging directly into the raw EOS blockchain down here. Now, why would an app want to plug into this new layer up here instead of plugging directly into the blockchain? The answer to this question is that there are going to be resources within this layer called VRAM and vCPU, which will enable dApp builders to utilize the EOS blockchain in a much more efficient way. This layer will enable dApp developers to only utilize the scarce CPU and RAM resources on the EOS blockchain itself when it is absolutely essential. It eliminates any superfluous resource usage. Right now, dApp developers are overusing RAM. You might even say they're abusing it. It's not their fault. You're, they're not doing anything wrong. It's just that our early adopter dApp developers haven't had any other options as of yet. It's sort of like they're trying to run a computer program without a hard drive. So they're having to throw everything into RAM. But this new layer here is going to provide them those options. VRAM and vCPU are going to be alternative resources for DAP builders to utilize so that they will no longer be so heavily reliant on the EOS blockchain resources for everything. With this new Liquid Apps layer, Smart contracts would still be stored on chain, of course, but the use of blockchain resources to store and access those smart contracts will be limited to the absolute essentials. Other data that isn't essential to storing and processing of smart contracts can be stored up here in the less expensive VRAM. Now, it might look like this is all going to make things a whole lot more complicated for the DAP builders, because now they'll have to know how to manage all these new resources intelligently, right? But this isn't the case. This layer here is smart. It's got some built-in intelligence. It knows when VRAM can be used versus when the EOS blockchain RAM needs to be used. The logic is built into this layer so as to manage all of this for the DAP builder so that the developers don't need to worry about any of this. All right, so let's get into the vocabulary of this new layer and the different components of it. So Liquid Apps calls this new layer the DAP network. And the DAP network has its own token, the DAP token, which is a utility token. Development teams will need to procure these tokens, and then they will use them to access the DAP network. Developers do not need to pay per transaction with the DAP token in order to access the network. Instead, it's, it's set up just like the EOS token, where the DAP tokens are staked in order to gain access to the network. Specifically, they are staked to the DSPs. The DSPs are what we mentioned earlier as a new alternative way for block producers to earn revenue. Although we should clarify that you don't have to be a BP to be a DSP. Anybody can be a DSP. It's just that there's so many teams right now that are attempting to make a living as block producers and who have the infrastructure and the technical know-how to do this type of thing that BPs just so happen to be in the perfect spot to serve as the first DSPs. So what is a DSP? The DSP, again, which is short for DAP service provider is the super node that brings life to the DAP network. In this way, the DSPs are similar to the block producers on an EOSIO blockchain. But the DSPs aren't running EOSIO software and they aren't signing blocks. Instead, they're running the DAP network software provided by Liquid Apps. And instead of signing blocks, the DSP is providing the actual interface for developers to access this DAP network here. You can think of the DSPs as being similar to the cloud service providers of today, like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud. 
And actually, it is very possible that down the road, some of these big existing players will even decide to serve as DSPs, offering EOS smart contract functionality right alongside all of their other existing services. But for the foreseeable future, existing block producers will be the first type of organizations to move in on this space, being the first group to run DSP nodes. The DSPs will be competing with one another to attract in DAP development teams. They'll be competing to offer the most affordable and the most robust set of services to the DAP builders. Once the DAP builder chooses which DSP to plug into, they'll stake their DAP tokens to that DSP. The more tokens the DAP stakes, the more DAP network resources they get. A secondary purpose of the staked tokens is that the total count of DAP tokens staked across all DAPs on a given DSP determines how much that DSP gets paid. Just like EOS block producers, DSPs get paid via inflation. There is 1-5% to annual inflation of the DAP token, and this inflation goes towards paying the DSPs. In this way, there are a lot of similarities with the DAP token and the EOS token. Both are utility tokens used to procure resources. Both have a supply of roughly 1 billion. Uh, and Liquid Apps is even doing a similar one-year public token sale for the DAP token, very similar to how the EOS ICO was structured. A difference to note here, though, between the two is that there is no limit to the number of DSPs in the DAP network. Whereas in EOS IO chains, there's a set number of block producers who are active at a given time, 21. The DAP network, on the other hand, will support as many DSPs as the free market supports. On January 24th, the Liquid Apps team held this conference call with a wide set of BPs to announce the DAP network, to explain to them what it is for the first time. Watching the response from the BPs was interesting. They were quieter than you might expect, given how huge this news was. We don't know what the BPs were thinking, but they were likely playing out in their heads what this all means for the EOSIO ecosystem. For those BPs who are heavily invested in one of the alternative EOSIO chains, the sister chains, this wasn't necessarily good news for them. The EOS mainnet will soon be able to handle a much larger population of applications in a cost-effective way. The EOS mainnet will once again be able to compete with the sister chains on the affordability front. If any of these BPs were considering spinning up yet another EOSIO chain, one that we haven't heard about yet, those BPs are probably reconsidering the timing. The EOS mainnet and ultimately all the other existing chains are about to become much more scalable and affordable due to this DAP network layer. And so it's questionable whether there is enough demand at this point for any additional chains. The BPs on this call, and especially the BPs who have been striving for a spot in the top 21, but have not quite been able to get there. These BPs are going to be analyzing this new opportunity of becoming a DSP on the DAP network. Going forward, and especially over the next few months, expect to see regular announcements coming out of BPs who will be launching DSP nodes. The first service that Liquid Dapps will support is VRAM. This will be ready at the same time as the DAP token public sale begins, which is targeted for this February. To repeat that, we don't need to wait for the year-long token sale to complete. The first DAP network service, VRAM, is targeted to go live this month. vCPU will come later, currently targeted for the second half of this year. Theoretically, once the Liquid Apps suite of services is fully fleshed out, an applications builder could build on EOS without owning any EOS tokens directly. The DAP builder could just purchase the DAP tokens and run their app entirely through the DAP network layer. The DSPs, however, will need to own EOS tokens. The DSPs will need to own enough EOS tokens so that they can handle all of the DAP requests coming through from, from any DAPs using their service. This could be the future where the EOS token is primarily owned and used by the DSPs, where it will be an unusual edge case for individual apps to build directly on top of the raw blockchain. If this is in fact where things are headed, 
this will have an interesting impact on the BP elections. As the EOS tokens aggregate into the hands of the DSPs, it will be the DSPs who have the majority of say over which BPs get elected to the top 21 spots, and which don't. So, this DSP role could prove to be a more stable form of income than being a BP. Plus, if we do end up going down the route of voter incentives, like what Brendan Bloomer has been suggesting, not only would the DSPs earn the DAP token inflation, they could also earn the EOS token voter incentives. This might work out very well for the BP elections in terms of electing a healthy set of block producers, being that the DSPs will have a vested interest in ensuring the EOS network is stable and secure. The DSP business model is reliant on a stable and secure EOS blockchain, so they will be watching the BPs very closely and voting intelligently. Now, a few weeks ago, we posed a question as to why Block 1 was not more urgently addressing the scalability issues on the EOS mainnet. Why were they not more aggressively working on an IBC solution, inner blockchain communication? We may have just gotten our answer here with this Liquid Apps announcement. Block 1 likely knew ahead of time that the Liquid Apps team was building this out that this DEP network was going to give them some breathing space, alleviating the scalability issues to the point where it makes IBC a bit less urgent. This doesn't make IBC obsolete, though. IBC is still going to be an essential element in EOSIO horizontal scaling. Rather than replacing it, the DAP network will actually complement IBC quite nicely, providing a shared memory space across chains. And as you can see from their roadmap here, Liquid Apps has their own IBC targeted for the first half of 2019. Now, the only potential drawback that some development teams may see in the DAP network is that they do need to place a certain amount of trust in the DSPs. The applications are going to be operating through the DSP interfaces. So if a DSP were to be compromised in some way, it would put any DAPs using it at risk. This could be alleviated in a few ways. First, the DAP builders can have some redundancy in their DSPs, plugging, plugging into more than just one DSP so that they can cut over to a backup DSP if their primary DSP is compromised. Secondly, we will likely see some DSPs structured as DACs, as a decentralized autonomous community where the DSP itself is decentralized, similar to how EOS DAC applied the DAC structure to block production. There will definitely be a demand for a decentralized DSP in this way. And you can expect this intelligent set of block producers to recognize this need and to respond to it accordingly with one or more DSP DACs. If you have any questions about Liquid Apps, please join their Telegram chat and ask them directly. The team there have been very responsive to questions. That's it for this week's episode. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We'll help you stay current on EOS as this revolution unfolds. Thanks, and we'll see you next week right here on EOS Weekly.